So hi everyone and um, thank you all so much for joining this webinar today. Um, there's really quite a number of you on the call so we're really happy to have you all here with us. Um, so my name is Lucy Hardy and I'm research manager here at Charity Job and I'm also joined with Claire Griffiths who's marketing director at Charity Job. So Claire's going to help facilitate the Q&A at the end. So a few things to note before we kick off. Um, so firstly, you should all be able to see my presentation slides at the moment. So the slides should move through the presentation with me. Um, if the slides do go out of sync to my presentation at any point, a sync to present button will appear in the bottom left hand corner of the slides. Um, that's where you can see the arrows to flick through the slides. So you can press that button to link the slides back to where I'm at at any point. And you can use um, those buttons to flick through the slides at your own pace, then use that sync to present a button to get back to where I'm at. Um, so as I mentioned, we will have some time for Q&A at the end. So please use the Q&A feature um, to leave your questions. So if you're joining on the Teams app, this should be on the banner at the top of your screen. And if you're joining on your phone, um, this will be in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And Claire will be keeping an eye out for questions um, and we'll try to get um, to through as many of these as possible in the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So don't worry if you don't get an immediate response to your question. And if we don't get around to answering your question, we will follow up with you directly after the webinar. Um, but I just want to note that this webinar is being recorded, so please only share your questions if you are happy for them to be on the recording. And finally, I'll be sharing a recording of this webinar and the webinar slides, as well as a copy of the candidate survey research report to all those who've registered um, for this later today. So for those of you who are familiar with us, you should know that something we're passionate about a charity job is helping charities to recruit more fairly and effectively. And one important part of this involves listening to candidates and making simple changes to improve the candidate experience. So in today's webinar, I'll dive deeper into this topic, sharing insights from the candidate feedback survey and sharing some simple tips on how you can create a candidate approved application experience and one that can positively impact your reputation and your hiring potential. So we'll also be introducing you to our Get Back to Me campaign and talking about why it is so important for charities and companies recruiting to respond to all applicants. So here's a quick overview of the next 45 minutes. We'll kick off with insights gathered from the candidate feedback survey. Next, we'll explore how you can create a candidate approved application experience. So here I'll go through some tips and strategies that you can implement to enhance the candidate experience. After that, we'll move on to the critical issue of getting back to candidates, where I'll introduce you to the Get Back To Me campaign. And we'll talk about um, how you can take action and why you should take action to protect your charity and employer reputation. And finally, there should be around 10 minutes at the end for a Q&A session where you can ask any questions you may have. Um, so for anyone who's just joined, uh, you're welcome to leave questions in the Q&A um, in Teams as we go, and we'll try to get through as many of those as possible at the end of the webinar. So a bit of background to the candidate feedback survey. As I'm sure many of you will know, 2022 was a really challenging year for charities recruiting. So the UK experienced a shift from an employer driven recruitment market to one where candidates were in a stronger negotiating position. So with the ability to shop around for roles that offer meaningful work and competitive compensation, it became more and more difficult for charities to attract and retain top talent and fill their vacancies. So that's why in October we shared a survey with all candidates who had used our site in the last six months to look for or apply for jobs. And our goal was to gain insights into how we can improve our support for both candidates and recruiters, especially during this challenging recruitment period. So the survey sought to understand the pain points that candidates face during their job hunt and also to gather feedback from them 
on how recruiters can improve their application experience to attract more candidates. We received a really positive response to the survey with almost 500 candidates participating. So first, I'm going to talk a little bit about the pain points that candidates face during their job hunts. And by pain points, we're referring to sort of problems, frustrations or things that are very annoying for candidates. So we asked um, those who responded, <coughs> sorry, to select all the pain points they faced from a list of pain points, which was based on previous charity job research and wider research. So as you should be able to see, the two key issues that candidates reported facing were one, having to complete long application forms, which was selected by 59% of those who responded as a pain point. And the second was not hearing back from employers about job applications which was selected by 54% of respondents. Um, as you can see, many candidates also selected having to write cover letters, jobs having too many requirements, salaries not matching responsibilities of roles, lack of transparency on flexible and hybrid working, and not finding jobs that they're interested in as pain points. We went on to ask candidates what their main pain point was and what their next major pain point was, and that was from the list which we shared with them previously. And we found that having to complete long application forms and not hearing back from employers about job applications still came out as the most common main and next major pain points. So 27% of people said having to complete long application forms was their main pain point and 19% said that not hearing back from employers about job applications was their main pain point. So we delved into the issue of application processes and application forms um, more. So we asked candidates how likely they'd be to apply for a job that requires completing an application form. And we found that one in four candidates who responded told us that they would be unlikely or very unlikely to apply for a job that does require completing an application form. And this is probably an underestimation of actual behaviour, as we know from our own data, the jobs which are posted on charity job, which require an application form, get only one third of the applications of jobs that don't require completing one. And interestingly, when we asked candidates um, to explain their answers, respondents who said they would apply for a job that requires one also tended to carry out their responses. So, for example, saying that they'd only complete one if they had the time, if they're really interested in a role, if the application process um, is short um, or because they really need a job. And regardless of how likely candidates said they would be to apply for a job that requires completing an application form. When we asked them to explain their response, um, almost all candidates um, described the process as a nuisance. So many candidates just told us that they simply don't have the time to complete application forms. And this is especially true of those candidates who told us that they're currently in work um, or they have caring responsibilities. Also passive job seekers, so those who aren't actively looking for a job, but may be open to a new opportunity if one came along are particularly likely to be deterred and they may only apply for jobs that require very little time. Many candidates also told us um, that they won't complete application forms because they don't receive a response or feedback. So it seems that those two main pain points which came out um, are actually really linked in determining a candidate's future job seeking behaviour. And some other fairly common responses um, included some candidates telling us that they felt CVs were better. Some felt that application forms could be filled in at a later stage, so after a candidate has already got through that initial sift. Some said that they felt they were archaic or outdated and they don't want to work for an organisation that is one of those things. And some candidates said that they would only complete one if they met all of the job criteria or if it was their dream job. A small minority of respondents did express positive views about application forms and their reasons included that application forms are often anonymised and that application forms can ensure that the necessary information is communicated with recruiters. So we went on to ask candidates for their advice to recruiters 
and we asked the question, if you could give one piece of advice to recruiters advertising on charity job to improve your application experience, what would it be? And there was a lot of commonality in the responses to this question with seven key themes coming out. So over the next few slides, I'm going to go through these themes one by one, and I'm going to talk about them in order of how frequently they were mentioned. So the first and most common piece of advice, um, which a large number of candidates told us, was to be clear in your job descriptions. So many candidates said that they want clarity on all aspects of the job. So, for example, the job requirements, the level of the job, the salary, the remote or hybrid working arrangements, the location, what the application process involves, etc. And some respondents told us about times where they'd applied to it for a job and they'd actually got to interview stage only then to realise that they weren't suitable for the role. So being clear early on um, about the role is really the best way to avoid wasting candidates time and also to avoid wasting your own time as a recruiter. We've already spoken about application forms, but many candidates also told us they wanted recruiters to stop using long application forms. They told us it just takes too much time, it's demoralising and it feels unfair, especially if they don't get a response to their application. And as we know, it actually stops candidates from applying for roles in the first place. So the third theme which came up is to give candidates feedback and at the very least to let candidates know if they're unsuccessful. Many candidates told us how frustrating it is to apply for a job and to not hear anything back. And many candidates also told us that they were frustrated with not getting feedback on why they're unsuccessful. And this is especially disappointing for those candidates who get to the interview stage. And this is something that we are passionate about changing at Charity Job. And I'm going to talk more about this, this later, um, why it's so important and how you can get back to candidates effectively. So the fourth key theme was to reduce the number of job requirements and to make sure that the salary is appropriate for the role. Many candidates said that some of the jobs they've seen advertised on charity job are all encompassing with many different requirements and responsibilities, but without a salary to match. So recruiters need to be realistic about what they're asking for. We do understand that for some charities, so especially smaller charities, this might not always be possible. Um, we know that some small charities need people to be all rounders who will have a mix of duties and that they may not always be able to offer the most competitive salaries. <clears throat> However, um, in these instances, you should reduce the job requirements to what's absolutely core to doing the job. The fifth theme was to be open to older candidates and those from other sectors or roles. And this is very important if you want to hire in the current market. Um, we actually know that two thirds of our charity job candidates are from outside of the charity sector. And we also know that half a million older workers left the labour market during the pandemic and many of them are open to coming back to the workforce. So um, charities really must welcome older workers and those candidates from other sectors if they want to fill recruitment gaps. The sixth point um, was that some candidates stated a clear preference for CVs. And they told us that information which is included on a CV should not be asked for elsewhere. So, for example, also on an application form. And the final theme which emerged um, was for recruiters to let candidates know if the closing date may change. So this helps candidates stop missing out on jobs that they plan to apply for and to stop wasting time by starting applications clear closer to the closing date. We understand that some charities might close the role early if they've had a lot of applications, um, but stating this in the job advert um, can help applicants to prioritise the application, or at the very least, it won't engender a bad feeling if it is closed and they apply afterwards. So the results of the candidate survey might feel like quite a lot to consider, but there are actually some very easy steps you can take to improve the candidate application experience at your charity. So in the next um, few slides, I'm going to go through a couple of recommendations. 
So first, you should pay careful attention to your job descriptions. It's essential to make sure all aspects of the role are clear. So that includes working arrangements, benefits, location, and you should be specific on things like exactly how many dates the person in the role would have to come into the office and so on. You should also focus your job descriptions on what's really important. So list only the absolutely essential skills and competencies to do the role rather than listing things about an ideal candidate or perhaps the qualifications and background of the person who was in the role before. If you're open to older candidates and those who are from outside the charity sector, you can state that you're open to those from all backgrounds and those with transferable skills in your job description. And you should also make sure that your job descriptions are as inclusive as possible. Um, and you can do that by watching out for things like charity jargon, um, non-inclusive language and age bias language. And finally, we advise against closing jobs early where possible. But of course, um, if you think you might do that, please make this clear in your job description. And if you are posting your job on Charity Job, you can add a badge to your job description, which lets candidates know <clears throat> that you're interviewing as applications come in. My next recommendation is to use screening questions and CVs instead of application forms. So the findings from the candidate survey really showed us that application forms are the main pain point for candidates and using them will prevent candidates from applying for your roles. We do understand that some charities use them for reasons like um, they sometimes feel that CVs don't include all the information they need um, or they might feel that a CV doesn't help them to adequately assess motivation for a job. So if you are a charity who's struggling to make the move away from application forms, we would recommend that you try screening questions. So for those of you who aren't familiar with them, screening questions are questions which are required of a candidate alongside a CV or cover letter at the point of application. And they can be used in many ways. So for example, you can use them to assess basic eligibility for the role. So you might ask about someone's right to work in the UK or their ability to work from a certain location, for example. You can use them to assess the required skill set. So for example, can they use um, Excel or another software? And you can use them to kind of assess motivation for a role as well, or even to ask a work sample question. So on the image in the slide, you should see some examples of how they can be used. And we recommend kind of including only a few of these, so no more than five, um, and you can include that alongside a CV to collect any essential information that might not be in the CV. And when you do post a job on Charity Job using Applicant Manager, you can create your very own screening questions for three. So my last recommendation is to review and benchmark your salaries. So as we discussed, one of the things that candidates told us is that they sometimes see roles with responsibilities um, which don't match the salaries for the role. And we firmly believe that offering fair salaries is not only essential for attracting and retaining top talent, but also for promoting diversity, equality and inclusion in the charity sector. So you can use Charity Jobs Salary Checker tool to help you benchmark your salaries and to see if the salary that you're advertising is actually appropriate and if it's in line with market rates. So our Salary Checker tool allows you to search for a job role by entering the role title. So for example, you could enter fundraising manager, finance officer, whatever it is, and then you'll be able to see the average salaries. And you can also filter down to see average salaries by organisation size and by location. So you can filter by London, outside of London and remote. And to access the salary checker, you just need to create a recruiter account on the Charity Job website. So the findings from the candidate feedback survey highlighted two major pain points of our candidates. So the first being long application forms and the second being not hearing back from employers about job applications. So we've already spoken a lot about long application forms. But now I'm going to talk more about the issue of not hearing back from recruiters and why this is so important, not only for our candidates, but also for charities or companies recruiting. 
And I'm sure most of us on this webinar today have experienced this ourselves. So you see a job that you really, really want advertised and you spend <clears throat> hours of hard work on that application, then you submit it or perhaps you even get to interview. And the wait to get a response can be so, so painful. And when the days of waiting turn into weeks and you still not got a response, you may start to feel angry or upset. You might start to lose confidence in your abilities or and actually doubt yourself. So our candidate feedback survey highlighted just how many candidates have also experienced this and that it's one of the main things they want recruiters to change to improve their application experience. And when we looked at other research, we learned how widespread this is. So research by the Human Capital Institute found that 75% of applicants never hear back from employers after applying for a job. And 60% never hear back from employers after an interview. Getting back to candidates isn't just the right thing to do. In the current candidate driven market, recruiters need to focus on their brand, their offerings and the application experience if they do want to recruit. And there are also repercussions for your charity employer brand and wider perceptions of your charity. <clears throat> so in the charity sector, every applicant is also a supporter of your charity and cause. And if they have a negative experience when applying for a role, their perception of your charity will diminish and they could be less likely to support you in the future. So research by Glassdoor found that more than 70% of job seekers will report a negative experience to their friends, family, colleagues, or on the internet. 86% of job seekers will look at a company's reviews and rating before deciding where to apply for a job. And 55% of job seekers report that they won't apply to a company after reading negative reviews about them on Glassdoor. So to further investigate, we asked the candidates who had responded to our candidate feedback survey one more question about whether they'd apply for a job in the future if an organisation ignored their application. And a massive 79% of those who we surveyed said they'd be less likely to apply to an organisation again if they hadn't had a response to a previous job application. So this is huge and it just goes to show how much of an impact a poor candidate experience can have just from sending, well, just from not sending that one email. So that's why we've launched our Get Back To Me campaign. So in an age where it's so quick and so easy to get back to candidates and a job market that currently finds us with more roles than available candidates to fill them, we don't think it's acceptable that this still isn't happening. Recruiters are losing potential applications through something as simple as not having had responded in the past. And for candidates, it's demoralising to invest valuable time applying for roles or attending interviews to hear nothing back. So our Get Back To Me campaign encourages all recruiters to always get back to all of your candidates, no matter what stage their application re reaches, and to make recruiters aware of how important it is for their reputation, as well as their future recruitment potential. So the good news is that when you post a role using Quick Apply on Charity Job, you get free access to Applicant Manager, which is our end-to-end -end hiring platform. And we've developed Applicant Manager to make it super easy for you to get back to your candidates. So you can bulk send emails to candidates using pre-made templates, for example, for rejecting candidates, or you can create your own templates so that you can easily contact unsuccessful candidates with basic feedback in less than five minutes. So the bulk send feature here can help practically eradicate this problem of getting back to candidates. It requires next to no time and effort from recruiters, but it can completely change a candidate's experience of your charity. And as you should be able to see on this slide, um, we have a template here from Applicant Manager. And the copy on this template um, is sort of a really positive and constructive way of giving feedback. And when getting back to candidates, we do encourage you to thank unsuccessful candidates for their interest and explain that there were other applicants whose skills and experience were better suited to the role. And when it comes to giving feedback to those um, who have been interviewed, it's really good to just be honest and polite. So if you do have any specific feedback that you could give them, so for example, about their interview technique, 
um, you can mention this as that will really help them in future. So yeah, where possible, try to avoid generic and ambiguous feedback and be um, specific where you can. Whilst candidates may be disappointed that they haven't been successful in getting that role, they will be left with a more positive impression or feeling about your charity and they may be encouraged to apply again in future. So here's how we're spreading the word about our Get Back To Me campaign. We've been sharing findings um, from the candidate feedback survey and also kind of blog posts about why and how you can get back to your candidates um, through research reports and blog posts. We've also been spreading the word on social media. And in addition to this, we've launched out of home marketing on billboards around London to raise awareness of the campaign. And finally, we're also making changes to our emails to recruiters to remind them to give candidates feedback. And we're reviewing and developing our software to make it easier for recruiters to provide a great recruitment experience. So thank you all so much for listening today. Um, I really hope you can take something useful from this session. Um, on this slide, I've just got a few quick summary points which I'm gonna go through before we go on to the Q&A. So the candidate experience is hugely important during your recruitment process. It impacts your reputation as an employer um, and a charity, and it helps you to maintain good relationships with people who could potentially work for you or support and donate to your charity in future. And to create a candidate approved application experience, you should ensure that your job descriptions are clear and inclusive. You should use screening questions and CVs instead of application forms. You should make sure that you're offering a fair salary for the role and responsibilities of the role. And finally, you should always respond to all of your job applicants. So now we'll move on to Q&A and I'll hand over to um, Claire to pick up some questions that were asked during the webinar. Hi Lucy, thanks very much for that. Um, I'm sure everyone found that really helpful. Um, yeah, we've got um, two or three questions here that I'm going to run through, but um, if we have time, um, we have had some response to the campaign already, so there's some, been some questions sent to us uh, before the webinar even started. So. Um, the first question was, um, are you doing a campaign for candidates about them ghosting recruiters? So, for example, them not turning up to an interview. Um, OK, so we understand that this is a problem. Um, it's something that some of our recruiters have told us about and something that we have actually experienced ourselves um, when recruiting. So we've produced some content for our candidates, um, so through blog posts and social media, which encourages them to sort of be open and efficient in letting candidates know if they have changed their mind um, or if they're not going to attend an interview. But we are looking um, at how else we can get out this message. Um, unfortunately, this is a side effect of the candidate driven market. Um, so we do encourage it, recruiters to move fast in this time, as often candidates do have sort of multiple job offers um, or multiple jobs on the go that they're applying for. Great, thank you. And actually on that note, um, we've had a question asking, does the job market still favour job applicants or is it beginning to tip back the other way? Um, I would say that um, last year was a, a, a really unusual year. Um, I would say we're still in a candidate driven market. Um, um, it is beginning to level out, I would say, but certainly at charity job, we're still seeing um, more of a candidate driven market than say 2019. So I hope that helps. Um, another question, it would be, uh, what can small charities do if they still need all rounders, but they aren't able to increase salaries? Um, so that's a really good question. So I think firstly, when it comes to thinking about what's involved in the job, um, so yeah, thinking about that job description and the job tasks, you should consider which task and requirements are absolutely essential for the role. And then you should focus your job description around these. Um, then you can sort of briefly describe other responsibilities that they may have to get involved with, but you should acknowledge that 
those tasks might have to be shared across the charity or you might have to provide some training to support candidates with those tasks so don't expect them to have kind of experience in everything but in terms of actually attracting candidates um and if you can't offer those sort of competitive salaries we really advise you to sell your cause so we know that um 76 percent of our candidates actually search by cause um so selling your mission is a great way to attract candidates and being really clear on the impact that the role has in helping the charity to achieve that mission you should also emphasize um any flexible hybrid or remote working options that you offer so we're actually seeing the jobs on our site which are remote roles get around five times the amount of interest than on-site jobs and second to remote roles, hybrid roles get the most interest. And um, yeah, you should also consider whether your role can offer, um, can be done sort of part time or in compressed hours. And other things are benefits. So emphasize anything that you can offer. So for example, a generous annual leave allowance um, or wellbeing support. And on that kind of note of benefits, um, we are currently running a survey to our candidates to find out about the benefits that they receive and value in their roles. Um, so we will be sharing findings from that um, in the coming months. So that can really help you think about how else you can sell, sell your role. Um, thanks. We've had a question saying if candidates don't like application forms or covering letters with a CV, what's the alternative? Sorry, can you just repeat that question, please? Yeah, sure. If candidates don't like application forms or covering letters with a CV, what is the alternative? Um, so as an alternative, um, we would suggest using screening questions um, with C CV. Did you say if they don't like, um, sorry, Claire, did you say if they don't like application forms and covering letters or? Yes, yeah, yes. so yeah. Yeah, absolutely. thank you. So, yeah, we would suggest using um, screening questions with um, a CV. So we know um, screening questions are kind of quick and um, they are they don't take as long for candidates to answer and they don't sort of deter candidates in the way that long application forms can do. And CV is something that most of our candidates um, already have kind of when they're preparing for jobs and applying for jobs so they can quickly submit that so yeah using the screening question lets you kind of fill the gap that you might have had with the application form if you feel that a cv um, doesn't collect all of the information that you need um, but it can help you kind of get in anything that isn't in the cv um, but it still makes the process quick and easy for candidates is there anything claire that you want to add on that point no, no, I think that's covered everything. Um, also, we've had um, some other questions in the chat saying, can ev anyone um, recommend an ATS? Um, we can heartily recommend Applicant Manager at Charity Job, which is free for all recruiters to use. So um, yeah, it's a, an end-to-end -end hiring platform with all of these tools. So, um, but I'll move on from that. Um, we've had another question saying, um, how can we persuade CEOs or trustees to make the move away from application forms? So re obviously related to screening questions again. Sure. Um, so yeah, if this is something that you're struggling with, um, so you're struggling to persuade CEOs or trustees, um, it might be a good idea to think about how you can make a business case for this. So the proof's in the pudding, really. So jobs on our site, which don't require application forms, get only um, one third of the applications of jobs, which um, sorry, get only <laughs> jobs which do require application forms, get only one third of the applications of jobs um, that don't require application forms. So yeah, you should definitely include that in the business case. And you can also share reasons around fairness. So especially if you're a charity that wants to increase their diversity representation, um, removing application forms will enable more people to apply, including those who are time poor. So maybe parents and carers. And if they like application forms because they help um, collect consistent information or information which isn't in a CV, like Claire said, this kind of comes down to um, advising using the safety net of screening questions um, to collect any of that essential information that might not be in a CV. 
Um, and if they like application forms, perhaps because of reasons to do with fairness, that's something we've, we've heard before is that they can easily be anonymized. Um, then you can also let um, them know that using charity job, for example, um, you can use anonymous recruitment, which will actually hide the names of those applying um, from the CV and help to remove bias from that shortlisting stage. Oh, that's great, Lucy. Actually, we have had a couple of questions asking how we make applying with CVs anonymous. So um, you've answered that question um, and preempted it. So um, that's great. Um, I think that's all the questions. I'm just going to move over to chat to see if there are any other questions on here. Um, would it be possible to send us the presentation after this? Yes, absolutely. Lucy will be sending um, a recording and a copy of the slides and also the um, candidate feedback report in full for you to peruse at your leisure. Um, how do we ensure that we are EDI compliant? CVs are shown to favour certain candidates. So again, that comes back to um, a charity job on applicant manager we do offer anonymous recruitment which will cancel uh, it, it won't show you the name so it allows you to sift through um, CVs based on merit in that initial first initial stage um, I think that is everything at the moment does anyone have any more questions um, what we'll probably do is we'll probably wrap up here um, and um, should you want to drop any more questions into the chat or the Q&A, we can follow up individually um, afterwards with you. But I will hand back to Lucy. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Um, thanks, Claire. Um, I can see we've just had one more question in the chat, but um, Sean, we can get back to you on that after the webinar um, is ended. Um, so yeah, let's wrap up there. So thank you all so much for joining today. It's been so great to have so many of you on this webinar. Um, we will be sharing a copy of the candidate feedback survey report later, as well as a recording of the webinar slides. Um, and a copy of um, the webinar recording. And we'd really encourage you to go and check out our LinkedIn Get Back To Me campaign and show your support. And as always, please do read our Recruiter Insights blog, which offers lots of advice on how to improve your recruitment processes. And then just to say, we will be holding more webinars in coming months, as well as releasing some things such as a salary benchmarking report. So please keep your eyes peeled for these. Um, so yeah, thanks so much everyone and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.